I think before you start the writing process, you've got to have an idea about what it is that you want to say. My advice is to t get typing. Don't worry about the quality of the writing. Uh, probably the first tip that I would give to my younger fellow uh, researcher and research students, get those early drafts as soon as possible. I think the most difficult part about preparing a paper is the writing pro uh, part. Sometimes when people are staring at the screen and you got that cursor and a blank sheet of paper in front of you, it can be very daunting and you have to get over that process and start the juices flowing in your brain, start that creative process of writing. Also I want to suggest a very important thing, that is if you want to start writing a paper, there's no need to get stressed. Start doing your figures or your graphs in a PowerPoint. But if you can't get over that initial fear that it's not going to be good enough, that you don't know what you're talking about, I, I think the most important thing is to start writing and not to worry about it. That might involve bullet points, it might involve uh, writing about your methods for your paper because that's the part you might know the best. Sometimes you are waiting for that moment that there is a tangible uh, outcome that you can achieve through the, your research uh, and you don't have to wait for that moment to get it started. So you've been doing some work for a while, you've got some results and you'd like to write a paper or your advisor would like you to write a paper. And so to my mind, you've got to have an idea, you've got to have an, a notion of where it stands with respect to all the literature that's currently out there in your particular fields. Personally, what I do is I, I look at the uh, some other papers, relevant papers in my area of research to find out the structure of the paper then I prepare an initial structure for the paper, then I start by writing, just writing down my ideas the same way as I would be explaining to someone else without caring about grammatical and any other aspects of it. So what I do is I initially, either me or my supervisor, we together would write, a, write an abstract and then after that abstract is there, I know what the theme is. So it's what sort of an advance is, is your idea compared to all the other ideas that are out there. I go on and write all the headings, just the headings, and then for each heading, I would have a bulleted list which, which, in which I write what I'm going to write in that section. So once I have that kind of skeleton, then it makes things much easier. And then I'll keep on filling in all the other sections gradually within a week or two. I start with research methodologies because if you've done your work in the lab, you know what data is available right there. And the abstract is something I'm going to write at the very end because abstract keeps changing based on the results you're going to get it. In the field that I work in, the most important part of publishing really is to get the research results first because those will and totally determine um, what goes into the paper and how the paper is written in the end. And then it might happen that when you're doing those experiments, when you're doing that writing, you might think of other experiments which you want to do. The biggest challenge really is to um, do the research to get the laboratory results because chemistry is really challenging in that you often don't know whether one specific experiment will work or not, whether the molecules do what you want? Well, I, I guess being premature in terms of gathering evidence, I think, is, is, is a, a problem that occurs often. PhD students want to go out and get data. And you're sort of holding them back and saying, not yet. You're not ready. You haven't done enough pilot testing. You haven't... And, and the, the, the possible consequence of moving too quickly is that you overlook something. You overlook a particular variable that you might have gathered that would have allowed you to do a statistical test that you're now not able to. And so a lot of systematic investigation is necessary to gain an understanding and then design final research experiments that can prove your point. So keeping track of what you are thinking, doing the corresponding experiments, narrowing it down, and then continuously just writing towards the deadline sometimes for conferences that you have. Generally what I do with my students is um, if we get to a stage of our research where we think something is publishable, 
will generally sit down um, and identify the key figures that will go into the manuscript. Think of a key figure uh, or graph that's going to be in the paper that's going to quantitatively explain where your approach stacks up compared to all the others. So we'll, we'll draft those figures first um, and then basically get the story around those particular figures, what the data is actually showing. But getting that core aspect of the paper done first is probably the best place to start, um, certainly in our field. Then you're in a really strong place. Then you just got to write the words. So, you know, publishing from PhD, I think, is important. I think it's really important to aim to study and research questions in your PhD that are potentially publishable. And also the model of submission of PhD is changing. You know, the classic monograph is becoming less popular and more students are opting for the thesis by publication mode. When I actually started my PhD, I had no idea of writing papers because my master's was in uh, uh, engineering and I didn't have experience of writing papers, but during my first year of PhD, I was given a choice of doing a PhD by thesis, but sorry, by monograph or by publication, so I opt for doing by publications. And the expectation of a completing PhD is that you have a track record of work. Uh, there is an expectation that you're publishing along the way. Um, and I counsel my students to do just that. So I chose to do it by publication. And one of the reasons I wanted to do that was uh, because I know that once you like aiming for these publications, it means that you're actually uh, trying to create an identity at the end of your PhD journey, where you have all the scholar articles uh, which reflect what kind of work you have done. Right from the beginning, I think students should be thinking about designing studies that are involved enough that they could be published. Uh, so I highly encourage it, but I think that at the end of the day, the publishing of your thesis is very different than publishing a paper or an academic uh, professional paper. And so you might not in your PhD achieve the level of novelty or depth to publish your work. I think it's important that you publish the work out of your PhD thesis. Uh, it depends on what it is you want to do next in your career. But if you're looking for an academic career, then absolutely you need to have a good number of publications out of your PhD thesis. You know, as a student or an academic or anyone you know in this area, you want your um, data to be out there. You want your work um, to go out to a wide audience and actually get it out um, into the you know, into the scientific community to, to be appreciated. Mm -hmm.